Welcome to the BYU Family History Library. This video provides instructions for using the PlusTech OptiBook A300 Plus scanners in the library. Before explaining the operation of these scanners, here are some general instructions. The BYU Family History Library has a very useful collection of electronic equipment for scanning and digitizing books, documents, photographs, photographic slides, 8mm and Super 8mm movie film, VHS cassettes, audio cassettes, and Betamax tapes. All this equipment is available for use by patrons of the library free of charge during the time the library is open. However, it is best to contact the library through its website and click on the link to the scanning equipment page to check equipment availability. If you have a BYU login, you can then use this page to reserve a time to use the equipment. If you do not have a BYU login, then you can see the times available for using the equipment and contact the Family History Library help desk to make a reservation. Each machine may have its own way of storing the digitized images or audio files they produce. Make sure you know how and where your files will be stored before you start digitizing and scanning. If you are uncertain about saving your files, you can also ask for help at the help desk. The BYU Family History Library computers will automatically erase any data stored on them when you log off, so it is advisable to use your own flash drive, hard drive, or online storage website to store your scanned images. Please be careful while using the equipment, and if you have any trouble handling your personal media, ask for assistance. Some of this equipment is very expensive and should not be mistreated. The PlusTech OptiBook A300 Plus scanners are designed to scan bound materials such as books. The front edge of the scanner is designed to allow a bound document or book to be scanned without forcing the binding to lay flat on the scanner glass. Here is a list of the main parts of the scanner. The document cover helps keep the book or paper in place and protects the scanner glass. The document pad keeps the book or paper in place and improves the accuracy of the image quality. The scanner glass is designed to accommodate larger documents for flatbed scanning. The small reference mark helps you align your book or paper so all of your scans will reproduce the correct perspective. The scanner buttons are marked with their individual functions. You can press each button to execute a predetermined task. The power LED indicates the scanner's status. The power switch turns the scanner off and on. The power receptor connects the scanner to an available power source. The USB port connects the scanner to the computer. If the light on the right side of the scanner is yellow, the scanner is in standby mode. Briefly turn the scanner off and then on again and the light will turn green and it is ready to scan. To start scanning, log on to the BYU Family History Library and click on the Plus Tech Book Pavilion icon to start the scanning program. When the scanner is on, you can scan directly using the five buttons along the right side of the scanner. Preview, Color Scan, Grayscale Scan, and Text Scan. Using the side buttons will open the PlusTech Book Pavilion software, and you can then set the functions of these buttons. The scanner will automatically begin scanning. However, if the buttons do not work, Check carefully to see that you have designated a location for storing the scanned images. If you start the PlusTech Book Pavilion software from one of the side buttons, you may be scanning to a default storage location and need to change the storage location to your own flash drive or online storage location. With the Book Pavilion software on the computer, you can make several choices about your scanned image and where that image will be stored. The Purpose drop-down menu lets you choose between scanning directly to a PDF file or a JPEG format. The PDF utility scans directly to a PDF format file. You will need a program that can open a PDF file to view the scanned images. 
you can use the free Adobe Acrobat Reader to view your images. The file utility will let you scan images in different formats. These are JPEG, Windows Bitmap or BMP, Portable Network Graphics or PNG, Compressed or Uncompressed Tagged Image File Format or TIFF, and Adobe PDF or PDF-A file format. You may wish to ask this at the help desk or look online for a description of each file format. The most commonly used formats are JPEG and PDF. Place a book or document on the scanner glass and align the top edge of the item with the small arrow on the front right side. The front edge of the scanner has a special straight edge that is designed to enhance images from bound books. If the book is too large or thick, you can lift the cover off of the scanner. Carefully replace the cover when you're through scanning. When you're ready to scan a book or documents, lightly press the book or document down and select and click one of the buttons on the right side of the scanner. You can also scan from the Book Pavilion program by selecting one of the four options near the bottom of the screen, Preview, Color, Gray, and Text. If you need help in getting started, please ask at the BYU Family History Library Help Desk. There are five different purpose settings in a drop-down menu. The first two options are the ones most used, the PDF utility and the file utility. The remaining three options are for internal university use. The PDF utility scans directly into a PDF file, so the file format has only one option. You can set the rotation to automatically rotate an image after it is scanned. You must select a destination folder, especially if you are using a flash drive or other storage option. You must also provide a file name prefix. This can be any combination of letters or numbers. There is an option to automatically crop the document. You may wish to do some test scans to make sure you have made the selection you want to use. If you need assistance, please ask at the help desk. If you are scanning photos or images, you may wish to adjust the mode settings. Here are the screens showing the different settings. Choosing a higher resolution scan, such as 600 dots per inch or DPI, will increase the file size of the images. The Library of Congress Preservation Division advisor scanning at 300 dpi unless you need to make a large print from the image. You may need to make several test scans to find the mode settings that are appropriate for your book or document. This may be the case if the image quality produced is unacceptable. You may wish to start with the default settings. Here are the different mode setting options. The color selection has options for changing the resolution from 100 to 600 dots per inch and also has a custom setting. The document type lets you choose between a photo or a photo and text. There is also a custom setting. When you scan newspapers, magazines, and some printed artwork, you may see patterns of lines in the scanned images. These lines are caused by light diffraction and are called moray patterns. You can reduce the visibility of the moray patterns by descreening the images from the selection in the mode settings. Adjusting the gamma changes the luminance or the steps between darkness and light or black and white. Saturation is the amount of white that is recorded in the scanned image. Brightness is the amount of exposure of the image. It determines whether the image is over or underexposed. Contrast increases or decreases the sharpness of the edges in an image. Color matching will try to match the colors in the original with the colors in the scan. Auto density will try to match the resolution of the original when making the scanned image. When looking at the gray mode, color dropout lets you remove red, green, or blue, or RGB for printing with color overlays. If you make a scan removing each color, the resultant scans can be used for RGB printing. 
When using the text mode, you can set the threshold or sensitivity of the scanning process. The general mode settings also let you scan continuously at a prescribed interval. In the general mode, the reference to reducing penetration usually refers to bleed through where the paper is partially transparent and writing on the reverse side is visible. Clicking on this option may help to reduce this issue. Unless you have set the scanner to make automatic scans, you will need to click on the transfer button each time the scan is finished. This will copy the scanned image to your designated storage location. Be sure to verify that your first image has been scanned properly and then stored where you expect it to be before continuing to scan additional images. If you need additional help, please ask for assistance at the help desk. Please be aware that the documents or books you may find to scan could be protected by copyright law. You are responsible for determining if any specific records are covered by some country's copyright laws. Becoming aware of the copyright restrictions that apply to the records you are interested in digitizing is an important part of being a responsible researcher. We thank you for your interest in using the equipment in the Family History Library and hope that you will take advantage of the opportunity provided to preserve your ancestral heritage.